Hello guys and welcome back. Today we will finally be making a very known and very powerful energetic RDX. That's something that I've always tried to do and today we will be making some and testing its properties. So if you wonder what RDX stands for, it means Research Department Explosive. It also has other names such as cyclonite and hexogen and it looks like this. There are quite a few ways of synthesizing it, but the most common ways are the Woolwill process, which we will be following today, and it's the most simple. It is done by reacting fuming nitric acid with hexamine in presence of ammonium nitrate. But there are also several other ways, like the Bachmann process, which is the most widely used industrial method today. In it, hexamine is reacted with ammonium nitrate in the presence of acetic and hydride and nitric acid leading to RDX formation with better yields and lower byproducts. I might try this method again in the future. There is also Kamerling process where the hexamine is previously reacted with lower concentration nitric acid to obtain hexamine dinitrate, which is then further reacted to yield RDX. I actually first wanted to make RDX via the hexamine dinitrate route but then all of my dinitrate just liquefied during storage, so that plan got thrown away. I also dedicated a video about hexamine dinitrate, and if you want, you can go watch it. But anyway, all of these pathways have their pros and cons, but I went with the first one as it's the easiest. So let's start with the synthesis of RDX. Firstly, we need to prepare 40 grams of fuming nitric acid. In some procedures, it says that the nitric acid must be free of nitrogen oxides, so it calls for use of white fuming nitric acid. But this here is just ordinary red fuming nitric acid with some nitrogen oxides dissolved in it. As I later found out, this does not present any problem, and the acid actually turns colorless during the synthesis. So next, we need to add this beaker with acid into an ice bath. and we can begin to add in total eight grams of ammonium nitrate. The role of ammonium nitrate here is that it increases NO2 plus ions concentration, stabilizes the reaction, and reduces the need for sulfuric acid. Overall, it just makes the reaction proceed much better. At the additions, the temperature increases a bit, but that is not important. So when all of it is added, we can start to add in the hexamine. Hexamine is this heterocyclic amine, and it looks like a white crystalline solid. Now we need to very slowly add the hexamine to acid and nitrate mix and monitor the temperature. For best results, the temperature should be kept below 15 degrees C. After addition of hexamine, you can observe some bubbling. This is not boiling, but it is normal and just reflects that reaction has started. Most likely, those are bubbles of nitrogen and carbon dioxide. So let's now talk about the reaction. This reaction may seem like a nitration at first glance, but it actually isn't. In fact, this is a nitrolysis reaction Nitrolysis is a chemical reaction in which a molecule undergoes cleavage due to the action of a strong nitrating agent, usually leading to the incorporation of nitro groups. It often involves breaking carbon to nitrogen or carbon-carbon bonds while forming new nitroganagene products. The reaction is very complicated and I don't really know its exact mechanism besides cleavage and nitration. But anyway, if the reaction conditions are adjusted, another similar compound, HMX, could also form. This is even more powerful than RDX. 
But anyway, back to the synthesis. Now I'm adding the rest of the hexamine in. Another interesting thing that happened was that the nitric acid has turned clear. So ultimately using red nitric acid is just okay and there is no need of use of white acid. I will just continue to add the hexamine and monitor the temperature until I add everything. Okay, now all of the hexamine has been added and now we need to push the reaction to completion. To do that, it's pretty simple and I only need to heat the solution to around 80 degrees C. At that temperature, the nitric acid should start boiling, but this is actually a good thing as it prevents the solution from being overheated. As the solution is heated up, a lot of bubbling can be seen again. This indicates the reaction's progress. And now when it has reached 83 degrees C, I only need to keep it at that temperature for about 10 more minutes to absolutely react everything. Okay, so once the time is up, we now need to cool the reaction mixture down. I prepared an ice bath and placed the beaker in it. During cooling, we should see some white precipitate, which should be the RDX. So now the solution is cooled enough and we can see that it has turned cloudy due to RDX precipitation. The last step now is to fully precipitate it by pouring it into some ice cold water. All there is left to do is to filter it and dry it. As you can see, we got quite a lot of product. The final yield was 2.73 grams of dry white powder. And now it's time for some tests with one of the world's most used and powerful explosives. Okay, so let's firstly try burning it unconfined on some aluminium foil. It should burn very rapidly. Nice. It burns very fast and leaves behind practically no residue. What it leaves behind, though, is a very strange smell, which is very similar to that of chlorine. But it is better to not smell that, as nitramines are always decently toxic. Okay, so now let's try a few more small batches. Nice. 
Now let's try confining it in aluminum foil. Look at that, it practically made a mini rocket. No detonation or anything close to it. But that is expected, as RDX is a secondary explosive, which means that it is not sensitive enough to detonate by itself in these small quantities. It needs a detonator, which is filled with primary explosive, to then make the RDX explode as well. And that is the point of modern explosives. You want them to be very powerful, but not very sensitive. Okay, so for the end, let's just do only one more thing. Let's try it mixing it with some oxidizers. But I think that it won't have a significant impact on its performance as RDX already contains a lot of oxygen in its molecules that can oxidize the carbons. But anyway, the first oxidizer is ammonium nitrate. And now a much more powerful one, sodium chlorate. It made it a bit more powerful, but apart from that, nothing really drastically changed. So alright guys, this was it for this video. Making the RDX was a thing that was on the menu for quite some time now, and it felt really nice when we finally made it. It is of course a very special and interesting molecule that I will for sure made a bit more of in the future. But for now, that's it. If you liked it, feel free to like it, and if you want to ask anything, just write it down in the comments. So as always, bye.